Hello, my friends. My name is Ron. This is This is Spirit Moves. I'm so happy to be with you today. I want to, the hope, my hope would be to encourage you to be the best you can be for God. If you would, you can open your Bibles to 1 Chronicles chapter 13. 1 Chronicles chapter 13. This title is called Mistakes Cost. Every mistake you made in life is usually uh, a reaction to the cause of a mistake. Have you ever hurt somebody without intention? It was a plan, but someone got hurt. Maybe you said the wrong word. Maybe you gossiped about somebody and something you had no information about, no knowledge, and you ruined the reputation. You put them to shame. Sometimes you react out of reflex. You get no thought to, to anything, but you just immediately react when something happens. Sometimes we react with a, a thought from the heart. Well, of course, you know, I like that person a whole lot. And, and, you know, I feel that I, could do, I should do this a certain way. It was just go headstrong, full into it, to do something, to change a situation, and we give no thought to it. And when we're going to things with no thought, no thought, no, you know, it was just barge in, like the ox in the, in the China, China shop, the barge in full speed ahead, no thought about it. And I want to give you a piece of my mind. They don't need a piece of your mind. They really don't. Your emotions can lead someone to danger, death, or broken spirit. A lot of times it's a broken spirit. You keep on putting a person down, they'll feel like they're down. And they may even start to believe it themselves. And it's your fault. Or maybe someone done that to you. They reacted to something and, and they kind of tar and feathered you, and so to say. And you got hurt over it. People wear their emotions on their sleeve. Should not be like that. Should not be like that at all. I want to read from you a verse. Chapter 13. First Chronicles. And it says in verse 3, Let us bring the ark of the God back to us. We did not inquire of it during the, the reign of Saul. The Ark of the Covenant was stolen by the Philistines. Yes, and they put it in their, their, uh, their God's house. And what happened is when they put it in the, the, the God's house, it, it did not end up very well. Their God, the first night he fell flat. The Ark of you know, and the second night, they, they, put the, or they put the God back up standing. And the second night, it fell flat and broke into pieces. You know, they thought it was uh, to show when they got the Ark of the Covenant, they thought, well, you know, this is good for us. Because they thought their, their God was more powerful than our God. Seventy people looked and opened, opened the hood of the, the Ark. They lift up to look inside. Seventy people died immediately. It was so bad for the for, for the Philistines, they were willing to get rid of it. So they took it to, to a guy's house and said, take it away. We don't want it no more. We want nothing to do with that blasted thing. They killed us, they made us break out in boils. And, and we don't we, get, get rid of that thing. I don't want it no more. So left in in, in you know, possession of a of a godly man. And those guys to put in the house. And not to admire it, not to touch it, not to shine it, not to pull it, but just leave it alone. And wherever the Ark of the Covenant was, the house was blessed. So verse 7, chapter 13, they moved the ark from Abedem's house to a new cart. 
the Uzzah, and the law guided it. David and all the Israelites were celebrating with their might before God, with songs and harps and lyres and trembles, cymbals and trumpets. I mean, that's praising the Lord, you know, to bring the cart, trying to bring to Jerusalem. On this time, David took off his uh, outer garment and danced before the Lord. Some people call it being naked. He was not naked, though. He had undergarments on. But what happened is the symbols of trip. Verse 9, when they came to the threshing floor of Kidon, Uzzah reached out his hand to steady the ark because the oxen stumbled. The Lord's anger burned against Uzzah. He struck him down he had, because he had put his hand on the ark. He died before God. Wow. I might have done that if I was there beside the ark. I'd seen those, the oxen stumbled. Yeah, I mean, it's just reaction. So a man died. Half the anger was upon him because he did touch the garment cart, the Ark of the Covenant. The Ark of the Covenant, let me tell you something about it. The Ark was 52 inches long, 32 inches wide, 31 inches high. It weighed 330 pounds. It was supposed to be carried on staffs and shoulders, which four people carrying it would be about 82 pounds on each man's shoulder. It was not light. But did Uzzah go to hell over that? I'm not so sure he did. I mean, he didn't react to what I thought. Anger God. But Dustin, we have no information that he went and died and went to hell over that. Somebody was at fault, but it wasn't Uzzah. Not really. Maybe it's against David or his wise men making a foolish thing like that. They made a new cart. That means they met the dimensions, they took the wood, they planed it, they carved that, they made a new ark, a new cart for the ark. The cart for the, yeah, for the ark. The thing is, the ark was not to be carted. It should have been uh, to be carried, not carted. It was to be carried by Levi's. Not anybody, just Levi's. So David finally consulted the Lord later about this. Now, after this situation, they had a scrimmage with the Philistines. And over the scrimmage, David went before God and said, shall I fight this battle or not? And God answered him, told him how to surround the people to win the skirmish. Yes. So whose fault was it? Making a cart. Now, you know, the wise man with a bright, genius way. And we go down farther And 15th chapter, it says, this is around verse 13. The situation was because you Levites did not bring up the first time that your Lord has, God broke out his anger against him. We did not inquire him about how to do in this prescribed way. Nobody went before the Lord. No one prayed. No one fasted. No one got hold of God over that. They just decided, well, this is a good idea. We're going to go do it. A man God died. Whose fault was it? I don't think Asa was really default because I'm sure I would have done the same thing. You don't have time. You, you don't have time to write. Just Instinct, but instinct can get you in trouble. It can kill you and kill somebody else. But what's the answer if we want to be, uh, you know, how to handle situations? Is there really an answer? See, David and his people should have went before the Lord before attempting to do this. Should have prayed and fasted, God, 
tired of we to do this. And then God would tell him to get the Levites, have the Levites purified, sanctified. And then you'd get a pole and you'd put it through the loops, through the ark, it had loops, loops. And you put the, you know, and you had four people, four people carrying it. That's what you do. And they'll carry, they better be Levites or won't work. Oh, sometimes we wonder these people that are supposed to be Hawaii is making foolish decisions. Uh, but are we much better? Are we just heading to something full speed ahead? Have our emotions in our sleeves? Have our mouth not, uh, little, 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 have our mouth not intact? Are we speak too soon? We don't give thought to our words? Right there's a lot of harm and danger. That's right. I want to read something else in closing. I want to agree read to you uh, Philippians chapter 4. Okay. For I have learned to be content whatever the circumstances. I mean content. I learned to be in verse 12, I know what is to be needed. I know what is to have plenty. I learned the secret of being content in every situation. But I want to go back to verse 6. Do not be anxious about anything. But sometimes we get anxious over little things that uh, seem to come up suddenly. Do not be anxious about anything. But in every situation, by prayer and, and petition, and thanksgiving, present your request to God. In every situation, not some, some of the time, in every situation, you need to go before the Lord with your request, with thanksgiving, and ask Him, Lord, how do I handle the situation? Help me control my mouth, Holy Spirit. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ. Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. Present your request. Lord, give me wisdom. Lord, give me peace. Lord, allow me not to talk and say things I shouldn't say without thinking it before I speak. And the peace of God, which transcends all you understand, it goes beyond your understanding, will guard your hearts and the minds in Christ. My friends, I want to challenge you today to be the best you can be. Don't hurt people. Mistakes cost. And we, we have the opportunity to build people up with hope and encouragement and pray for them and ask God for directions before we act upon it. My name is Ron. I hope you have a blessed week and we'll be back sometime later. Good day.